Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own fights. Today we got Rukber versus Achab. Uh, Rukber is from Turkey. I've seen this guy do really, really well. Um, he fought, I covered him a little bit earlier, a few weeks ago, and then uh, my favorite fight though was when he fought one of the El Chamali boys and uh, almost lost actually, so that was pretty cool. And Achab's been on the scene for a while. This is my first time watching this through and through. Um, generally before I post it to you guys, I just check here at the end. What's the score near the last match? If it's a big blowout, I don't really watch it because uh, I feel there's not too much to learn. And especially when the strategy is pretty tense. Um, if it's a blowout, you know, there's maybe not, not too much to take away from it. This one looked pretty close up until the last minute. So, uh, let's watch it together. Break it down. Achab generally smaller in his division, and Rukber I think is a slightly smaller too actually, but smaller guy fighting an even smaller guy for this for this weight. Typical front foot shenanigans. I feel like Achab, yeah. Google Career Certificates provide oh online training for Pause. in demand. Apologize. Uh, that's what's going. On. I was about to say. I think Achab's going to go soon. So far, all we know is the last 30 seconds is that uh, Rukber is the one kind of dictating the pace of the fight. Achab kind of looks like he wants to see what Rukber's game plan is or what he's sitting on here. Not too much craziness. Both players still seem like they're. Still seem like they're a uh, nice punch. Okay, and so punch to the backside is a thing now, apparently. That was, that's interesting. Like a, a flank side punch, that's that's interesting. So maybe add that uh, instead of waiting for an open side punch the way I used to have to. Uh, you can just cancel and punch them in the back, and it's cool. Okay. Oh, game's opening up. But wow, both sides. Nice. So what I like here by Turkey, let's rewind this for a second. Uh, he got scored on. And as any good athlete or uh, fighter is, if you get scored on, then you try to make the points back right away. What I like here is he used the same attack as he used before. So on the attack just before this, Acha blocked it, had that punch to the back uh, and scored. Ruckberg gives him the same look, but instead of leaving it up there, he drops it immediately, expecting Achab to close. Now that he's closed, he can hit him with that uh, the two-hand push or the hold him in place because he knows Achab's weight will be there and immediately tries for the top. I like that he blocked it the first time, and on the second one, he goes for it a second time. I mean, he blocked the first one, which is typical and kind of normal, but I like that Rekber went for this a second time right away. A lot of people here, I would have expected a flank shot. I think that's uh, probably what Achab was expecting too. Rekber went twice for the head, got the second one in. And uh, that was that was also good because on the first one, Achab blocked. He's probably positioning. You can kind of you can feel it when someone's trying to position on you. You'll feel them moving pretty solidly. So I think what happened here in this instance... Achab's moving for the, uh, after this block, Achab's moving for the counter. He can feel that Achab's trying to set up for this inside kick. And so he said, okay, well, I'll trade your, your inside body kick for the inside head kick. And it goes through. Immediately tries a third time, which is really, really good. Trying to attack three times because after you get hit in the head once, usually there's like almost, sometimes there's a mental reset where this guy's, oh, I just got hit. And you're trying to re, uh, try and reorient yourself. And Rekber recognizes that. Went for the third headshot. Good try. Achab responding right back, trying for his own. But none of that, uh, none of it got through. The game's a little bit reset now. They're not sure. They're, the reason they don't go right back into a flurry, I think, is because they're not sure if the opponent has adjusted to their adjustment yet. So they're kind of resetting the board, feeling each other out just a little bit, just to see what they have, what they're sitting on, if they're planning something. 
They're trying to get more information on each other. Not a bad idea. I think Achab there was going for an inside out axe kick. Uh, Ruckberg closed the distance too fast for that to go through. Also not a bad idea. So the reason um, the reason Achab went for a punch there is because the last two looks, Ruckberg is going in and going in. And that's kind of, I would say, 80 to 9% of the times Ruckberg's going in on Achab's aggression. So Achab punching there and missing because Ruckberg goes back. Not a bad guess and good adjustment by Ruckberg. Bounce? Okay. Hard? Okay. Hard use. Looks like it got denied. Yeah. I'd... Nice try. Let's try both sides there. What happened in this flurry was both were recognizing there's only one slide back or uh, were in place, and so the counter was to go 1-2, and I think both players had attempted that here. Oh. Two. oh, no, correction. Turkey recognized that Achab was just doing the lean back, and for the extra reach, he tried to go in twice with a skip uh, with that little mini hop, 1-2. He's still doing it now, so good adjustment. Trying to catch Ajab on the initial cancel and lean back because his head's back. The first jump will get you into distance. The second jump will get you further enough to hit his head. Rookbeer trying to get do Rookbeer attempting for the headshot there. Good, good attempts. Okay, this one's. I think Achab trying for the punch there again. Okay. So Achab just looking for the punch opportunity again. I don't think, I think Achab, because he's still fighting him closed in. So my guess is that for some reason, Ajab doesn't want to fight him open. I actually don't watch Ajab as much, so it could be that he doesn't really like fighting right leg forward. Um, it seems like this is pretty much a stalemate so far, and so the game plan from Ajab may have been keep fighting him like this and then go for that backside punch. That headshot was lucky. Just as long as you watch that and we get the punches in, we'll pull ahead. Uh, Ruckbeer seems like he likes this left leg in front. He hasn't switched stance either, and I think... Because he was close to hitting the head on the first two attempts of that hop in into the face, that hop like the hop to the face, I think he's opting to stay in the stance because the opportunity is there, and so he's going to try and maximize on that later or just during this match. Good leg control. Able to cancel and hold it up. That's the next stage for you guys, too. If you're able to cancel or you'll do the flippy kicks, it's better to cancel and hold your leg up because it, obviously if you don't have to go down and back up, saves you time, allows you to counter faster. So if you guys are so inclined, feel free to start practicing that. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Leave your leg up to still have power enough to hit. I'm not really sure what the card was for. I hate ads so much. There we go. Achab tried to do what uh, Turkey's doing there. With the 1 2 to the face. Not bad. Not bad. Grabbing. Okay. 3 3. Nice try. Nice try. Good attempt there.
Something I would try with, uh, so it seems like turkeys, turkey likes to keep his leg up and it's pretty strong. It, like it's, you can screw with it and it's going to stay there. So what I might try as Achab actually is if I were to switch, I like, uh, his name's Mer- Mersham or Hosini, uh, Hosini, the one who fights Dehun a lot. He has this great punch where he'll fight you open stance. And then as your leg is up, he'll come in hard with that, just a, just a class and then punch on top of that. So I think that would be a good option for Achab here, unless for some reason he's staying away from fighting him open stance. Uh, but I think given that Achab wants to punch, given that Rekber has a really strong cancel and that thing doesn't go down, I think that kind of crash in cancel punch that Iran does would be a great technique to use here to cancel out uh, Rekber's standing cancel. Oh, oh, good try both sides. Achab knowing he's probably going to go out, be on that one leg, swinging it up. Almost hit. Rekber's left leg is crazy accurate, it seems like, with that left leg in, out in. Nice. Oh, nothing. That's that's sad. That was a good, that was a good hit. Oh, man. How did this happen? Right for the inside Iranian point. What happened here? Oh, so the way that breaks down is uh, that was a good bait by Rick Bear. I think Achab was expecting a clash in midair, but instead of the, there being a clash... Ruckbeer bet that he could get his foot down and he could get in before Achab could lift his head to the face or his foot to the face. And he ends up winning that, which means he gets better position in the clinch, which is why Achab's off balance here and the headshot hits. So a good bait by Ruckbeer. So if you notice before here, uh, the, the one before that, it's... He has a little float and then they cancel and then down and Ruckbeer tries to go in. Tries it one more time. Float, 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 float. So he's still giving Achab the same look. So float, float, down. This one's float, 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 forward. And on this last one, he's going to float, bring it down fast, and then blitz. So the first two set up this last point. Great setup by Ruckbeer there. Good job. Skip forward, skip forward. Oh, we're in. Last round, everybody. Last round. Nice. Good. I like these kind of attacks uh, because usually there's a small lull in the beginning of a match where players are kind of getting situated. You're not, you're like 80% there because you're kind of gauging your opponent. Ruckber super experienced, able to get his head out the way. But Achab to it, it, to tie the game up right away. That was a great, I think a gr- great plan to do. Too bad it didn't hit, but that was, I like it. I like it. Get set and go. Really deep attack. Great, great attack there. So Rekber now knows, it seems like that kind of blitz play he did in the second round near the end yields a lot of points. And it seems, it also looks like, based on the scoreboard, that Rekber's inside game, even though Achab's still swinging, Rekber's a little bit better at getting his foot on the headgear than Achab is. And so I think that's where, that's why he sticks to this game plan and why he's still trying for points. Yeah, no point. Loading rib punch. What happened there? Oh, nope, nope. Yeah, Rugber not minding that at all because his left leg out in is fantastic. Oh, that's such a shame. That was that was great by Achop here, right here. Boom. Baits that front leg up just to swipe it in the middle. Boom. That one. That that right there was really good, I think, because he knows Ruckber is going to try and blitz. He knows that uh, that has been the game plan the last couple of ones, where it's, it's the draw down, and then he's trying to get in. Achab doing the adjustment to try and get the inside point. I think that was great adjustment on Achab's part. Good, good job.
Back punch. No back punch. So maybe the back punch doesn't score as often as I thought. But good attempts here. Oh, good. It also seems like, in general, Rekber's upper body strength is stronger than Achab's. That's why he's able to hold him in place and manipulate him more in the clinch. Oop. Yeah, definitely, definitely stronger. For holding? Okay. So what you could do there if you're off balance is I would suggest you watch... Dehun fight against um, what's his name? The GBR Sindin, and not the one where Dehun loses, but Dehun's adjustments against Sindin the next time is he has this great inside floating jump op ball, and it it wrecks um, it like Sindin doesn't really know how to respond. I think there's a new, I'm sure they've probably come up with a counter strategy because that was a couple years ago. But if you're losing in the clinch fight. The option that I saw from Dehun was to not fight them in the clinch. You want to back off and throw that floating inside um, op ball and score that way because both their hands are up pushing you. So that's an option, another option for Ajab here if that was something he had practiced or felt comfortable doing. Turkey is also really good at getting foot position in the clinch before Achab does. He's usually set and grounded before Achab gets set, which is why he's able to move him around more because Achab's trying to catch his catch his balance. Good, good punch, left leg by Rekber right away. Oh, nice. So if you're in the clinch, guys, this is a great example of the space you want to create. This is ideal, this kind of space right here, because he's leaning back. So the only thing, like any fly, any kick to the body is probably going to result in him falling over and maybe two points, so only a plus one gain. Or the what most people try and do here is they try and swing to the head, in which case you have a little bit more time to see it because it's going to the head, so you can block that as you're kicking. But this this, this offensive, like he's leaning forward, Ajab's leaning back leaning forward and able to swing it either to the body to the head. Uh, if you notice, I think Rekbeard keeps his head low the whole time. Yeah, so if you notice, Rekbeard doesn't look up and try and kick him in the face then. He's really good at, uh, I guess, distracting his opponent and looking to the body because it's a really good body setup already. So he's keeping that look to the body and swings his leg up. It's a really simple uh, technique, but uh, we were taught also in the Philippines and uh, our trainer, Master Go, if you're going to kick to the head in the clinch, you want to look, or just kick to the head in general, you want to keep looking at the at the ground and then you go to the face. And the same thing if you want to go to the body, you look at them at their face and then go to the body. Uh, because a lot of times, especially if I'm in the clinch and I'm in a flurry, I'm subconsciously reading where the knee's coming out and I'm also reading where the opponent is looking and so if they're looking for the head and i see the knee coming out wide that's almost for sure going to the head but here rugber does a great job knowing that training looking to the body and swinging to the face and gets it so good job good job by him for holding oh rugber looks injured Those back punches, those back punches are getting through. It looks like. Yeah, in the clinch, Rekber is doing a great job there, um, making sure he's positioned. I didn't know they saw a card. I thought they lost a card. That was a good attempt. Knowing that, knowing that Rekber only has that usually uses that front leg, that spin kick to the body, not bad. Not a bad guess there. Boom, boom. Rekber now just trying to hold the lead. And it looks like he's injured and his back hurts, so he's trying to just survive that. Oh, that's the nail. Oh, close. If that went to the face, that would have been pretty, pretty cool. Not a bad counter against the front leg there. Oh, and that's it. So, all in all, I think uh, Achep had some options. He He's a lot better Taekwondo than I am, so maybe he didn't feel comfortable using them. I think against that front leg cancel, the Iranian punch would have done well. Um, you can see Achab's punch is going through the armor, though, which is good. Rekber doing some great jobs with that great setup, the float, 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 and then the, the down blitz and go. Um, also a good setup, looking to the body and going to the head. Achab had some great punches in here. 
Uh, also, not even though Ajab didn't score those spin kicks at the end, I think if he had used those maybe a little bit earlier, end of the second round kind of deal, that would have been a good option. Because, uh, I mean, those are high-scoring points, and so if you shoot them two or three times and one of them scores, it's almost worth it. Or rather, it is worth it, assuming you don't get scored on. So uh, there were some options here. Uh, it's hard to fight a fighter like Ripper, though, who's really good with his leg, really good at canceling, and these are both high-level fighters. So... Uh, as always, guys, I don't I don't want you to take away just the techniques they're doing. Like, don't think, oh, it's just that. I mean, this one, the, the, the body positioning is good to take away. But more importantly, as always, I want you guys to take away the setups that they're doing against each other and why they're doing certain techniques. It's not just throwing the technique. It's more about how do I get my opponent to do something, and then I can counter it. Uh, so that way I can capitalize on that mistake, on that strategy mistake. Um, you can learn technique, I think, through a lot of other YouTube videos, but putting them into the ring and being able to force your opponent into a pattern or make them guess you're doing a pattern and then changing it and countering and beating them that way, I think is overall going to serve you guys a lot better in the future. So uh, keep watching these matches, guys. Keep studying, keep training, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.